Alrighty, what's going on? So I'm rolling on the GoPro, I'm rolling on the mic here, and pretty much I'm back with another style of video, and I'm calling it Skip Sneakers, which is essentially a video on all the sneakers that I've passed on in the last few weeks. I figure I can make it sort of an episode style series, and if you guys like that, I can continue to make videos like this, like these, along with my usual sneaker reviews and other random things. So as a quick intro, a real commonality that I see between myself and like the 10 of you that regularly tune into the channel is that we like to find good deals on sneakers. And truthfully, when I'm not working at my actual job or on these YouTube sneaker reviews, I'm still looking at sneakers to potentially buy. My general philosophy on buying sneakers is that I'll buy something if I really like it, as long as it's at retail price. Otherwise, I'm going for sneakers that go on sale, honestly. And given everything going on in the world right now, so this is sort of a time sensitive video in the sense that we're still in lockdown or quarantine, there are a bunch of sales that have been going on over the past few weeks, so I've had to show some self control. So as a way with not being able to buy everything, I usually take screenshots of the stuff I pass on. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to do so at stuff don't likes because I'm usually posting to my story uh, the deals that I come across. And even beyond that, I just share my day to day sneaker life. So I post pickups and whatnot. So if you can't wait for the videos, that's just a great resource to stay up to date. So I'm bucketing this into one big segment of not only sneaker deals I passed on, but also the various L's that I've taken. So like I mentioned, I don't buy everything on sale or at a bargain. I like sneakers that release and will buy things at retail if I feel compelled to do so. So I'll throw them in this video as well. But I think that about covers it for now. This is a long winded intro. If you have a few minutes and just want to chop it up about sneakers or listen to me chop it up about sneakers, this is the video to tune in on. So we'll start at the very beginning. So this starts at April 3rd, 2020 and ranges through April 27th. So this covers the entire month of April of things that I've passed on. Cool. So let's start. So the first few pairs are of the Nike Spiridon Cage 2 and Nike's collab with Stussy. I always try to hop on Nike sneakers during release and see if I could grab things. Obviously, I took the L on these two, which is fine because they're a cool runner, but it's not something I'd wear. I also don't have any attachment to Stussy or the Spiridon Cage 2. It looks like an early 2000s sneaker, yeah, 2003 sneaker. I was pretty young then, so I wasn't really into kicks, but this was an easy pass. And even if I got through, I probably would have returned them or resold them after I made a video, of course. Following that is my cart from a Nike sale. They were doing an additional 25% off. Uh, the first week of April so these two really stuck out to me the first one being the Air Max 90 premium uh, as part of the 2020 city pack so that one was the London pair paying homage to like their mail carriers uniforms I kind of regret not picking this up because $105 is the best price that I've seen on these so far and it was something that I took a risk on I figured that these would go on sale at some point because it was the one shoe from that pack that didn't sell out immediately and is in a full size run so who knows I'm keeping an eye on it if it goes down in price I'll probably pull the trigger but right now I still don't have it and it's April it's actually May 5th now wow and underneath that is the satin Air Jordan 1 I think it's a clean colorway the black red and white pretty much uh, $89 is a great deal for an Air Jordan 1 high I already have three pairs of Air Jordan 1 highs, I didn't need a fourth, and realistically I don't think I'd wear that too often, so that was a pass. Moving down is this Adidas ZX10,000, so this is a collaboration between Adidas Consortium and Overkill, from, but it was being sold on kith.com on sale, so 88 bucks, final sale, no returns or exchanges, I think that's a great price, especially considering it is $160 retail and it's a collaboration pair. So for those of you guys that don't know what Overkill is, it's just a shop based out in Berlin, Germany. I love the colors, I love the neutral grays, but then also those sort of pastel pinks and purples and that hit of green at the uh, inner walls is nice. I passed on these just because it was $10 shipping, so these are right around 100 bucks, which is still a great price, but I just didn't want to swing it. So this one I'll talk briefly about because by the time I saw the deal, the size run was pretty much gone, but it's a classic air more up tempo in the Olympic colorway. So this is the sneaker that Scottie Pippen famously wore 
uh, during his playing days, passed on it because I just don't see myself wearing a big bulky 90s basketball shoe. Back to Nike, I saw that they restocked this pair of the 90s, again part of the city pack but this one's the Paris pair. Uh, $140 retail, I caught them on a restock. I should have pulled the trigger just because it was one of the colorways that is, that was one of the more desirable ones. And I thought the colorway is really clean, it's a mainly all white shoe so I would wear it pretty sparingly because it would get dirty very fast. But I think the story behind it is cool, the Paris details on it were cool, and by the time I kind of brought myself to pull the trigger on them, they were already gone in my size 10. So passed on those. This one was on eBay, so it's an Adidas Ultra Boost in the antique brass colorway. This sneaker has been on my hit list for probably two years now, and the reason being is I remember Action Bronson was doing this sort of promo at Champ Sports in Times Square, and I work in New York City. I, I, at the time, I worked probably like a few blocks and avenues away, but the thing is I just started my job, so I couldn't head out during the day and check out these sneakers or grab these sneakers so ever since then you know I saw them on sale a few times on adidas.com I saw them on sale at champs and I don't know I just haven't pulled the trigger and at this point I do want to pull the trigger but I can't unsee them for the sale price of like $130 and they got even as low as like 86 bucks at a few points on adidas.com but that stuff never went through so pass on that pair Moving down is this New Balance 1500. The 1500 is one of the classic New Balance silhouettes that I don't have in my collection. So that one too is on my active hit list. I just haven't pulled the trigger quite yet. I think this white and navy blue color is clean and 100 bucks brand new without box is a pretty decent deal, especially given the uh, plastic shoe boxes that I have back there. I could easily store in one of those, but I just haven't felt compelled to buy a 1500 yet. Continuing that same eBay wave, the 990v3 is another silhouette that's been on my radar for the longest time now. So I have two pairs of v4s and I have a pair of the v2s. So missing from the 5 is obviously the latest v5, a v3, and then the original 990v1. So V3s are pretty hard to come by nowadays, and this was one that I came across brand new in box on eBay for $89. I think it's a clean colorway between the black and the gray, but the teal kind of throws me off. I'm not sure if it's something that I'd wear too frequently. So pass for now, maybe I might go back. Same thing, another 1500. I like the colorway on this one. I like the rainbow embroidery at the New Balance on the 1500, but again, not compelled to pull the trigger quite yet on a 1500. So this was the shock drop that Nike did during the very first few minutes of the first episode of The Last Dance. I caught it when it was at a full size run and we're obviously fast forward so it's May 5th so these had already released this past weekend and for a while they were sitting but they ultimately sold out. I like the fives, I just don't see myself wearing the fives too frequently. So. If I want it, it doesn't seem resale prices are too, too bad quite yet, but just had to pass on it for now. Another one is, this one was from Champ Sports. So Champs, Foot Locker, East Bay, they're all owned by the same company, and they've been doing pretty frequent discounts during this lockdown period. And one of the ones is that's pretty common is like a 25% off of your cart. So this was one of them. This is the multicolored 992. So the 992, Again, always on my hit list, and more recently they had just came out and retroed or reissued the 992 model, so for the longest time the only 992 you could get is on eBay and they'd have to be vintage pairs of one they released back in the day. But I guess given the success of New Balance, they're pushing out more things from the vault with the 992 being one of them. I really like this multi-colorway, or multi-colored colorway rather. But uh, 131 bucks is a tough pill to swallow, especially since all these Websites are doing sales, so this is one I held off on. This next one, this Nike SB Dunk High, was something I ran into by chance. I don't even remember how I came across this on CCS, but it was in a size 8 for 110 bucks. I think retail price on these was like 120-ish. Um, and a common trick that people use to find SBs is to just Google the style code or the colorway, and you know it'll come up on some skate shops or various skateboard related websites 
So this one source of BMX, they had a size 10 under retail, so at $104. I was ready to pull the trigger. I just recently picked up two SB Dunks, the uh, Beavis Mid and the Game Royal High from like 2013 and 2014 respectively. I didn't need another SB Dunk, I didn't need a black one, I probably wouldn't wear this one. There isn't that much of a backstory to it, so I watched them, I, I literally watched this website source BMX uh, get rid of this size 10, which is a shame because looking back on it, maybe I should have grabbed them, especially given the overinflation or the heightened SB market right now at this point in time. Moving down is the same cart from Champs, but this one has the Converse Pro Leather Mid in it. So the Pro Leather Mid was what MJ was wearing during college at UNC in the 80s. Again, the Converse Mid or the Converse Pro Leather Mid is a rudimentary basketball sneaker from, from back in the day. Uh, it reminds me of the Nike Blazer. And I was ready to pull the trigger on these because I think with the discount, it brought it to like $52, which is not bad at all for a white leather sneaker. But realistically, I just wouldn't wear them because I have a pair of Nike blazers in the collection that I barely even wear to start with. I, I don't know what, what would make me think that I'd wear these two. So those were an easy pass. Over the past few weeks, I've been noticing the Adidas Stan Smith just go on sale all over the place. So whether it's adidas.com or anywhere else like Nordstrom, Macy's, Zappos, and then your traditional finish line, Foot Locker, Dick's Sporting Goods, like all these different retailers from different walks of life that carry the Stan Smith has just been slashing prices on them. So it's a great time to buy them. I made a video back in the day on a pair that I'd found for $40, which was at the time the cheapest that I've seen them. And since then, I think these prices are pretty competitive. So definitely be on the lookout. If you're trying to get a pair, it's probably pretty easy to find them on discount. So this one is one that I regret. So this is the Houndstooth colorway of the Air Max One. Nike had since removed it off their site, I believe. And uh, man, $100 for this pair. It's so clean, it's so crispy. It's like sort of the gentleman shoe, I think. It has that sort of plaid print and then the browns are great, especially if you're trying to get like your menswear game on. Um, this is sort of like a casual sneaker that you could wear dressed up or down. Uh, and looking at more pictures of it too, there was this sort of gum outsole, and I'm literally such a sucker for gum outsoles. And that midsole looks to be like an off-white sail cream colorway, which I also really enjoy. So if I see these again, I probably will pull the trigger, but also probably won't because I just recently picked up an Air Max 1 that I have here. Quick little teaser. Check them out. Uh, video to drop on those. I'm also going to do another long form video. So yeah, just subscribe to the channel uh, if you aren't already just to stay tuned to the content because I do have a lot of different ideas. I just hope people watch them. If not, it's it's just for me. It's just a nice time capsule. Tangent aside, moving down, this is a cart that I had from Ames Northwest. There are a bunch of little boutiques and streetwear boutiques that carry a bunch of desirable things. And Ames Northwest is one of my little Easter egg ones or my go-tos in that they carry New Balances. It's it's usually a luxury streetwear boutique, but they had a, what is it, a 25% off code going on now. I don't know if it's still going on, but the 998 Bring Back, uh, which is like an all gray 998, New Balance is usually pretty good at bringing back the 99 or like a bunch of popular 990 models in the all gray colorway. $144 isn't a bad price, especially given they're made in the USA. The quality is on point, um, but had to pass on them because again, like many of the sneakers on here, it's a tough pill to swallow at uh, over 130 bucks. So these next three are on eBay. And here's another tip I have for you guys is that a lot of these brands have official eBay pages and the inventory on their eBay site or eBay page might be different from what's on their website. So you gotta always just cover your bases and really pull the trigger on things that you see that you'd want super quickly or else they'd be gone. But um, this is a Reebok Answer 5, which is an Allen Iverson signature sneaker. Realistically, the only thing that would drive me to buy this sneaker is nostalgia. Allen Iverson is my favorite basketball player of all time. I recently picked up a pair of question mids, and this pair I know would just sit in the box. Um, but I had screenshotted this black and red pair, this black and blue pair, and then this white and silver. So those first two were 60 bucks, and this one was 84. Who knows, prices might have changed. Uh, this is from the 25th of April, it is now May 5th again. 
so who knows so another thing that you guys don't know is that uh, I wouldn't say I'm like the biggest Manny Pacquiao fan, but you know, I gotta put on for, for the culture every now and then. So I have a pair of the SC Trainer 2010s um, in my collection back there that I haven't made a video about, but I do have them. And you know, this one came up because it is a, or it was a dead stock pair, never used, brand new with box, size 10, and they fit a little snug. So 90 bucks plus $15 shipping for a shoe that came out in 2010, fire deal. You know, I'm always trying to add to the collection of Nike Pacquiao trainers, especially now that Manny Pacquiao isn't signed to Nike, I don't believe. So I came across this Lunar TR1 for $130, which isn't a bad price. Again, brand new in box two, and these came out like in the early 2010s. Uh, again, just a tough pill to swallow, $130 for a shoe that I'd wear a few times. It was really just more for the collection aspect of it than the actual use case of wear. So who knows, maybe I'll come back and do some more searches on those and they'll come up in the next month search underneath that. So these are random. Uh, Ray-Ban is doing a limited 30% off everything on their website. I have two pairs of Ray-Bans. Uh, one popular video on my channel being of the Clubmasters that I made like five or six years ago when I had first bought them. I was still, I think I was young in college and I just bought them, but here are a few that I probably would have picked up. Additionally, here is the Air Jordan 1 Low in the Gym Red. So since I've taken this screenshot on the 26th of April, many other places have restocked these Air Jordan 1 Lows in the, in the Gym Red colorway, which is to be expected because the Air Jordan 1 Low isn't a super desirable sneaker, but from time to time they'll, they'll put out a bunch of cool colorways. Um, and being a GR, it, it'll restock. So the Pine Greens, for example, that I have, they're sold out in common sizes pretty much on every sneaker retailer, but they'll restock at some point, I think, and similar to these, um, these gym reds are coming back. It's a clean colorway, I think just in time for summer, it's super cool. If we'll be able to be outside and we'll be able to wear our sneakers, who knows, but for the summer, white and red can't go wrong. Here's another one, Foot Locker. I don't think many people are actively seeking out ultra boosts uh the only ultra boost that i'm really seeking out is that antique brass one obviously but i saw this triple white one and it's size nine and a half on sale for 160 um, plus an additional 25 i think brought it down to like 120 ish which isn't a bad price the ultra boost is still super clean um people say it's played out also is the jordan one high so there's there's some knowledge for you so this one I'm pissed about. This is an L that I took. Um, I'm never gonna buy off this website, YCMC. YCMC is like a sneaker retailer based in the DMV area. Um, their website is ass. It, it, it crashes, it's so slow, it's so laggy. The only reason why I caught these, this was kind of a shock drop of the University Blue Air Jordan 1 Lose. There's no definite release date on them, so retailers would have them and then they'd be gone super fast. I happened to be on this website at the same time because I was checking out an Air Force One deal. The site was so slow, I had them in my cart like 10 times and it would just cancel my purchase. So terrible experience, didn't get the sneakers and it wasn't even by choice but it was because of this stupid website. So uh, I'll probably eat my words because YCMC I've been seeing has been doing some pretty good deals during these past few weeks. But again, who knows. I'm hearing more screenshots of it sold out on Shoe Palace, Foot Locker, and uh, yeah, I think that about wraps it up for this video. Let me know if you guys came across anything this past month that you picked up or thought was worth picking up but didn't. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, and there's plenty more to come. See you guys.